Neary has put on 13 pounds since. Incidentally, those weights tonight at the bottom of our list here are provided unofficially by HB. Phillips, both champions. And now Ward awaits his opponent, Shea Neary. Neary regards himself as now the European the ring, Arturo Gatti, defending meaning that he is a head-on, high-contact fighter who throws 70 punches per round and tries to use that activity rate to overwhelm his opponents. Neary's from Liverpool and should have a huge following here tonight. Just a couple of hour boat ride from Ireland. Accompanied by the Irish ballad, Wild Irish Rovers. They're playing it for what's all, for all it's worth. He is a very tough young man beyond dedicated, lives a Spartan existence, and according to his promoters, does nothing but eat, drink, think, fantasize, dream of fighting. This is Pink Floyd right now. The Wild Irish Rovers rendition will follow the Pink Floyd borrowing that you're listening to here. Mary's only had one fight in the last 18 months or so, Larry. Why is that? According to his uh, management, they say that he had no big money fights coming up. He had accomplished everything they thought he could. They were waiting for the right opportunity. They're looking for that right now. A victory, they think, could propel them into a big fight against Arturo Gatti or Costa Zoo. Shane Neary has had 22 professional fights and won them all. 17 KOs. Mickey Ward's trainer, his half-brother Dick Eklund, says, we think that's an empty record. He hasn't fought anybody. And as you watch this telecast, we invite you also to log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing, our boxing website, to chat and score each round of Mickey Ward, Shay Neary, and later Prince Nassim Ahmed against Guiani Bungu. And while online, you can answer tonight's single website question, would you like to see Prince Nassim Hamed lose tonight? Yes, if you want to see him lose. No, if you don't. Incidentally, the one-hour chat with Steve Farhood on the website is for those of you only in the Eastern and Central time zones. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official announcements in the ring.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grand Hall Olympia here in London, England, where tonight Barry Hearn and Prince Promotions, in association with Cedric Kushner Promotions, present our co-feature of the evening, sanctioned by the BBBC and the WBU. WBU President John Robinson, Chairman and Supervisor J. Danny Gill. Timekeeper is Nick White. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Reg Thompson, Arno Polkrand, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mickey Van. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU Light Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with black, and weighing in at 10 stone even, or 140 pounds. His professional record, 34 victories, including 25 by knockout, with nine losses. He comes to us tonight from Lowell, Massachusetts, USA. Here is the challenger, Irish Mickey. his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and weighing in at 139 pounds or nine stone, 13 pounds. In 22 professional bouts, he has a perfect record of 22 victories, 17 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Liverpool, presenting the undefeated WBU light welterweight champion of the world. The Shamrock Express, Shane Neary. Okay. Okay. You, you both had your instructions in the dressing room. Shake hands, go back in corners, come out, we near the bell. Don't piss about. Come on. Shake hands, both of you. Okay. As close as we just saw them in the middle of the ring, forehead to forehead. That's how close we expect them to be for as long as this fight goes on. But Mickey Ward does have some boxing skills that he's going to try to use early in the fight. Presumably. Well, the big challenge for Ward is to get off to a faster start than is customary for him. Mickey Ward, a notoriously slow starter in big fights. Shay Neary, an ultra-fast starter. And that's the question that hovers over round one. Will Ward be ready for the fight? Ward in the white trunks, Neary in the black, and already Shay Neary starts taking it to him on the ropes. And Neary going to the body, which is Ward's specialty. Ward is pretty smart. He's not even putting power into his right uppercut. He's just touching him, and that's the worst way to get hit constantly. Touch him with the uppercut. You teach guys in the gym, but seldom do you see it. Just touch him. So he's doing it to break Mary's rhythm as rhythm tries to mount the attack. Well, you tries just, to mount this attack. At, at all points, keep your hand on your man. If you can touch him, sooner or later, you can put power into it. And you saw Ward's trademark left hook to the body, which is by far his most damaging punch. It's the punch that beat both Reggie Green and Alfonso Sanchez in fights which Ward appeared to be losing as they went along. You touch a guy 10 or 15 times with that hook uppercut, finally you put some power, and it's a new story. Hey, Ward's alive here. Neary landed a big right cross. Neary was hurt by one of those body shots, Jim. He noticeably winced and moved backward after Ward got him with a left hook, and he appears to be in a spot of trouble here. Yeah, it takes a minute to get your breath back on those body shots, but if you can weather the storm a little bit, you will come back better. Ward oh. making good on his promise to start much faster tonight. He took Neary's stuff in the first 45 seconds of the round and now has come back strong. Setting the tone with the left hook to the body and landing that one big right cross that followed. Forehead to forehead, and Eklund, and I'm sorry, uh, Ward's, the right side of Ward is also red from the body punches being thrown by Neary. Thirty 
three punch round for Ward. That was his punch stat average coming in in the two preceding fights. He's coming out trying to match Neary blow for blow, and now Neary starts to come on and take the last 30 seconds of the round, but Ward lands a counter left hook. Right from Neary's nose. And a big uppercut from Ward. Snaps Neary's head back. And another vicious left hook to the body. What a great round one. Whoa. It's seldom that a fight can speak for itself. I've got two words. Morales Barrera. <laughs> Here's Dick Eklund, the half-brother of Mickey Ward and his trainer. What a personal story Eklund presents. You may remember, if you're a long-time fight fan, that more than 20 years ago, on July 18, 1979, Dick Eklund fought against Sugar Ray Leonard, make it July 18, 1978, when he fought Leonard. And he took Leonard the distance, 10 rounds, in this, the 13th fight of Sugar Ray's professional career. Leonard winning the decision. Since then, hard times for Eklund, who wound up as a heroin addict. This, a scene from Eklund's stint in prison following criminal activities related to his heroin addiction. But since that time, he's kicked, he's clean, he's working with All his right. brother, he's a family man, he's Move back ahead. on track, right. and flashes a big smile every chance you give him to talk about. And he has convinced Ward that his best shot is to go right at Neary. In round one, Jay Neary landed 33 of 81 punches. Mickey Ward, 42 out of 75. Between the two of them, they landed 67 power shots. Power shots defined by CompuBox as anything other than a jab. A hook, a cross, an uppercut, a body shot. Those are all power punches. Near is most effective when he leads off with a good left jab. Keeps Ward off balance, jab him here and there. He would do better to even jab, out jab him for two or three more rounds before he starts in with all of his power. Little cut on the bridge of Ward's nose, not dangerous. That Ward possess a dangerous finishing left hook. Taps you with the right, turns right back into position with that hook. If you don't have your defense up, you can really get hurt. So Neri better keep his right hand up. Neri, like a lot of hyperactive fighters, tends to win shots from the side from time to time. Ward, having seen that on tape, has obviously decided to focus his attack directly up the middle. He's cagey with that left hook because he puts his right foot in front when he throws it. That's why it's hard to defend against. Round two, a slightly more controlled version of round number one. There's a good left hook by Neary as he stepped in on Ward. Switching to a southpaw stance. Yeah, he, he, he has a lot of power over that side, so a lot of that is just leverage for that hook. Right. When he switches to the southpaw stance, you always have the impression he's getting ready to set up that left of the body. He's been through it hard. Another uppercut, this time the left hand by Ward comes back trying to find the left of the body. Sneary digging his own right hand to the body. They trade shots at close range. This rough and tough start is benefiting Ward more than anybody. He seems to like it. He's got those big shoulders on top. Last pace in the first two rounds. Yeah, why can't you keep it that way, mate? Hey. Have your jab, do you work and get out of Work up the jab every time. It's working the teeth, but don't wait, Jim. Don't stand I... looking. You're looking great to me with this jab. You've got to keep that jab going. Keep it going and bring them up yourself. 
showed his version. Discipline now, Jim. He sucked him. Don't let him he dictate the fight. Himself. You dictate. Right, if we take him out early, take him out early. But I don't know. We got to knock him out. We don't want to go home no decision. All right? Keep your hands up and close. None of this moving around like that. Pump the double jab in his face. He's right there for you. What? Get up. Deep breath. He's right there for you. Try that jab. Double jab. Both corners asking for more jabs. Concerned about how much punishment their fighters are taking. Dick Eklund knows about decisions. He once lost a 12-round decision to Dave Davy Green here in London. If you want to go with a jab, Nair is going to have the Nair is going to have the best of it. He's the jabber. He can use the jab. Ward going to mix it up, catch him on the end of that left hook. It's not terribly surprising that Mickey Ward, who had such a low connect percentage against fighters like Sanchez and Green, is connecting on half his punches here. Shane Neary doesn't exactly try to hide from you. <laughs> Decent fighter, and you fight somebody like Shane Neary, you ought to be embarrassed if you can't land half your punches. He's right there. Ward is a long ways from home, and the one thing you want to do is never try coasting. Don't coast in a foreign country. Well, you know, it's it's impressive that he came out and threw as many punches as he did in the first couple rounds. It's at tremendous odds with his previous performances, but it raises the question: Can he fight at this pace for 12 rounds? And Ward wobbled there by a right cross from Neary. Neary goes to the body and to the uppercut as he tries to finish Mickey. Vicious body shots from Neary. Good discipline work by Neary. Ward trying to trade his way back. And Ward seemingly getting his legs back, although Neary continues to pound away. Two big misses by Neary. And Ward lands a counter as he still doesn't even try to move off the ropes. I don't know if he can, Jim. He's waiting for Neary to punch himself out. Now he's coming back. Now he has regained, he's restored some energy, and he's ready to exchange. And a left hook to the body, and an uppercut lands, and now he backs Neary off. And you mentioned Barrera Morales. Remember that seesaw round five of that one? Here's another round in which one guy dominates the first half of the round, and then the other guy comes back. And now Neary comes back again. And now Ward. This is like a movie fight. This is like playing to the bone. to 10, I thought Barrera Morales was an 11. I'm still trying to figure out if there's a higher number for these guys, although they're not quite in the same class. Yeah, they're not as fighters. skilled. They're not as skilled as Barrera Morales. Right, but... <laughs> I think they admire each other, though. <laughs> How about that, George? Yeah. Fucking is right. Go after Gideon. Listen. Hey. Mick, don't take unnecessary punches. You're not a punching bag. This guy, you can tear his head off with your hands up. Why are you letting him abuse you? Deep breath. All right? If you can let him hit you with your hands down, you can destroy him with your hands up. All right? You know? Walk around. All right. And you nailed him with the right hand. Come on, buddy, you to You've got to go for that shot again. Choose his hand, softball. Bang! Yeah. Let the left two go. Concentrate now. Discipline. Oh, well, Jimmy. Okay. When Ward turned southpaw, he left himself open for that right-hand punch that changed the tide of the early part of the round and led to this vicious pounding on the ropes. Right there, you see it once again. Neary threaded right through the gloves of Ward. And you heard Neary's trainer, Judas Plotty, saying when he goes southpaw, hit him with the right-hand lead again. 
comes out in a conventional stance this time. Grab his head, Mickey! Okay, well, George, they landed one jab in round number three. So I think the jab isn't going to be much of a factor. Yeah, but whoever can really get some of that jab, if this fight go on and on and on, the jab can be the telling point. If either one remembers it. Neri is doing a good job pointing it here, pointing it to the body. Once again, Ward against the ropes as Neri is free to attack. Neri's got to be careful to throw five shots while he's on the ropes. You don't get him back up, make him throw some with your defenses, your defense set. Make him throw some, but don't be off balance. Uppercut landed for Neary amid the fusillade of punches on both sides. close near is getting the better of it when he steps back a little bit Ward seems to catch it on the outside of those hooks Ward best keep close even when you rest it stay close they are trying to hurt each other with every punch this is a test now of will strength Conditioning. A lot of strategy. Neary can stay close. He will not get caught on the end of those shots. Fascinating, George, that you say a lot of strategy because the average fan would probably look at this and say, where's the strategy? They're just trading shots. Not at all. Neary's close. Elbows to his size. He get hit with a good one. He blocks it. Ford hurt Neary with a body shot. Ford hurts him again with that left to the body. Neary is wobbled. Gets his legs back, and he lands two important jabs. Entertaining fight. I wouldn't want to have to be charged to try and to score it. You don't face his face again. Step back, that half a step back. Got to and off you jump. Bring them up. Just give us a call. Jim, you're fighting too much, mate. Okay, let's stand up and box with him. Mix it up, vary the way. You know, he doesn't want to box, he wants to fight all the time. Jimmy, you're going to, you're going to go into his fight. It's easy for you. Confuse him with your boxing, but then after you jump. You see that Ward has suddenly become effective, what in effect is an uppercut. He seems to start it as a hook in the previous round. More and more uppercuts. And Jim, you heard in the corner of Neary, they're telling him to box Ward because Ward wants to make a war out of it, which is an unusual turn of events for a fighter of Neary's type and reputation. Yeah, absolutely. Rather incredible that you hear Shane Neary's corner telling him, no, no, you should box this guy. Harold, how'd you score through the first place? Jim, this one's a doozy. Jimmy McLaughlin must be loving this fight. Jim, 38 to 38. Two rounds apiece. I thought Mickey Wood clearly won the first round. But then Shane Neary came on and showed us why he's Shane Neary. Mickey Wood came back with the body punches to clearly win round four. Two rounds apiece. I got it even. No doubt Neary is a better boxer. Better with a left jab. Moves around better. And here he bangs Ward to the body to once again hit him against the ropes. And now Neary baits to the left and comes with the right hand and Ward pulls his way off the ropes. And Neary's got to understand this came about by way of boxing and get it going again on your boxing stance. 
big right hand over the top by Ward. And there's that uppercut. Boom, boom, boom. Three times with the uppercut. Still just trying to land it. Just not trying contact. to blow it away. Making contact. The power will come a little later. Come to the side. There you go. Now count it. Get out the gate. Come to the side. To the side. To count it. See, near his corner gave him good advice. Box this boy. Things are easier that way. Ward's want to mix it up. If he can get hit with two, he can land a better. In case you've just tuned in, we're in London, England. This is round five of an undercard bout between Shay Neary and Irish Vicky Ward. Ward from Lowell, Massachusetts in the white trunks. Neary from Liverpool in the black trunks. Later on, Prince Nassim Ahmed against Guyani Bungu. But in the meantime, this is a pitched battle. As if the Prince didn't have enough trouble, he's got to follow this act. And a lot of body shots below the belt. Whenever Neary lands his jab, he can double jab, he can do anything with his left hand. For some reason, he's lured into a fight. Because that's what he is, George. Sometimes, if you want to win, you got to be something that you're not. Straight right hand lands for war. Another give and take round in this totally toe to toe battle so far. St. Paul's Cathedral, in the Westminster section of London, where Mickey Ward and Shane Neary may want to go together tomorrow morning, knowing each other as well as they do, and as well as they will by then. Six round, Dick. Oh, yeah. Keep back. Hi. Let him feel good. Huh? Yeah. Man, when you're in there like this, right? Shot punch! Shot punches. You know what I mean? Head, body, head. Remember that in your mind. Head, body, head. This kid's gonna go. You keep letting him hit you, you're gonna get you're banged up. You don't need to get hit, you're not a punching bag for nobody. Your hands are much faster than this. Mick, show me some speed. All right? Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. No problem. Keep your hand down, up, and keep moving, Jimmy. The man in the red shirt is Vicky Mann. Generally regarded as a pretty good referee, highly questionable as a judge. <laughs> he had Julio Cesar Chavez, the winner over Brunel Whitaker in San, uh, San Antonio in September of 1992. That alone is enough to make him questionable as a judge. Oh, good body shot by Neary. And an excellent job of boxing. If he so chooses to do so, box. Now setting up with the jab is Neary. Right hand upstairs, left hook to the body by Neary. Ward not able to deal with him very well when Neary stands at range like this. Box. And uses the skills that George Foreman's been talking about. Do you want a box of fighter? Fight a box. <laughs> and Ward most definitely is a fighter. Which is why Neary's corner has been telling him to box. And why George Foreman's telling him to box. Every now and then you, got, you come down on, and you get a little win and you go toe to toe, but you go back to what you do. They've tested each other's will. Now they're testing each other's skill. Round five, both fighters were averaging more than 70 punches per round. Now Ward is trying to step back and be a counter puncher. That's what you want if you're near him. Make him want to box. Make him decide, I'm going to catch you with a trap shot. He doesn't have it in his repertoire. So keep him boxing, boxing, and thinking. Move away from the ropes, start all over again.
punches. All of those punches are to create a hard straight Let's right go. hand upstairs by Ward. Harry's punches landing, but Ward walking through them for the most part. And Mickey Ward points out, I'm a lot better once I get past the seventh round. Shane Neary in his 22 wins has never had a knockout past the seventh round. Ward is standing back, waiting to counter that right hand. That's what you want him to do. Box him around the side. Hit him in the chest. He's waiting for a top shot. Go down to the chest when he's waiting on a hit shot. Big right hand lead by Neary. Landed flush on Ward's chin. Ward just stood there. The way this fight is going, Jim, Ward is going to have to do something dramatic late in the fight, as he has before, because it's going to be very difficult for him to get a decision in Neary's home country and hometown. He don't know where he is. Let's go. That's it. That's all right, Mick. Come on, we got a beautiful. All right, let's go. Be back. Be back. Don't worry about nothing. Mick, you can't be lazy like that in there. Put your hands down in that. You gotta remember, Mick, you're in his country. That's right. We gotta take this time home with a knockout, okay? We train hard for this, Mick. All right? Yeah. Don't let him punch you. You don't need to. Make sure we not. Be back. He's hiding in you, Mickey. He's throwing this uppercut when he comes in. You've got to throw that. And he's straight him up and throw your left hand. Hey. You're not this Ward may be putting distance between himself. I'm sorry. Neary may be putting distance between himself and Ward at this point in the scoring, landing with shots like that. Big right hands. And for the first time in round six, there was a dramatic separation between the two fighters in punch output. Neary continuing at the high rate of work through 72 punches in the sixth round. Ward dipped to 41, perhaps marshalling some energy for the later rounds. Both guys are landing their right-hand leads pretty much at will. That's what you want from Ward. Occasionally, let him have a good right hand. It's that left hook you got to worry about. None of those punches landed. Good body shot by Mary. time with Neary. Moves to the side, come back with a body shot. Two of those body shots below the black on uh, Ward's trunks. Nicky Van stands and watches. Hard right hand lands flush again for Ward. This time he follows with a left hook. Yeah, when you're fighting a good left hooker, you keep him confident in his right hand. Nothing is going to happen to you. Just don't allow him to get effective with that left hook. If, if Ward can't seriously hurt Neary with his best right hand, as he did about 15 seconds ago, he's going to have to pick up the tempo and beat him with volumes of punching. I don't think Ward brought any volume over this time. It's all about one or two kicks here and there. Again, the right hand lands across the top for Ward. And again. And just that left hook that he's aiming to do it with. It's four hard right hands, and Ward has belted Neary with in the last minute. I mean, four clean shots. Boom. But Neary's still handling them pretty well. And as George Foreman points out, it's the left hook that poses the biggest danger. It's like fighting Joe Frazier, and everyone is saying, he's hitting you with his right. Don't worry about that. That's not what he want to do. Now, there's a left hook that landed upstairs. Ward, for the moment, has dispensed with going to Neary's body. And it's his left hook to the body that won the fights against Green and Sanchez. Another big right hand across the top. It seems that Ward is abandoned on the other left hook. He's going wholeheartedly in Neary, right Neary starts to get right hand conscious against Ward. Now Ward will get a chance with his left hook. There you are. That's great.
Here we see Neary going to the body, going to the body, going to the body, and ultimately leaving himself open for those right hands in the last round. Ward may have found sir, a real weakness in Neary as he looks to go to the body. He's going right over him, George. Amen. Give Very close. 67, 66, four rounds to three. Shane Neary. You know, Jim, I thought he clearly read rounds five and six with that effective aggressiveness, meaning Shane Neary. But in round seven, those right hands of Mickey Woods certainly should have won him the round. I mean, Mickey Woods landed dynamite right hands. So, I don't know. Very, very close. It's Now it's become the punching power of Mickey Woods against the aggressiveness and clean punching of Shane Neary. Three judges at ringside, one from Germany, one from Great Britain, Steve Weisfeld of the United States. Nera has got to get back, settle down, go back to your box. Sure your head is sore. You've been hit with a couple of good right hands. Stay on track. Punch output slowing down again. Ward is best when he lands those effective shots to get away like he just did. Get far away. Make Ward walk to him. Gary with a left hook to the body. Now going back upstairs. Ward trying to put more steam on his uppercut now. Ward has the temperament of a heavyweight. He just doesn't believe his size. He does fight like a heavyweight. He fights like a big, strong heavyweight. Fewer punches, harder punches. Stay dedicated to make it Ward find him. Follow me around. Find me. Oh, big uppercut by Ward. Left I told hook. you he was putting more mustard on the uppercut. And that one plants Neary on his butt. First time in 23 professional fights that Shane Neary has been down. 23 seconds remaining in the round as Mickey Van wipes off Neary's gloves. Ward lands a huge left hook. Again. He's done it again. Mickey Ward coming over to touch gloves with George Foreman. Just like one heavyweight to another. I mean, he is a heavyweight. <laughs> this guy has no kind of image of a lightweight or flyweight or featherweight. He Look started at it. it all with a hook to the body, his bread and butter, then that big uppercut after tapping Neary with the uppercut all night long. In this round, he cut it loose, and that became the difference. Once he was able to get those left hooks on track, oh, it's been a bad time for Neary. The grinding, gutty Mickey Ward pulls out another big victory. And that is a major victory because that could launch him into a... A big showdown fight with an Arturo Gatti or a Costa Zoo. Who wouldn't want to and see him fight Gatti or Zoo? And he's never been better. 
Well, he's got his brother out of prison, sparring with him, working with him on a daily basis. They have a very close relationship. Dick Eklund has been very good for Mickey Ward. Here's knockdown number one, Larry. Yeah, coming off those right hands he was throwing in the previous round, and suddenly he went to his power punch, the left hook. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's a good combo. Mike Tyson used to throw that combo in his heyday. <laughs> left hook to the body, left uppercut. You know? Yeah, he'd make that sound down there and have you weary of your body and go up top. You know, son of George, he's 34 years old, but as you've said before, old isn't old anymore. Nope. <laughs> well, not the it way he fights. Happening in the millennium now. Some things, some things are different. Woof. That was a great fight. He had to win this. He you was... talk about committing to the body punch. I love it. And he beat a strong, dedicated, good fighter. Who fought a good fight, excellent fight. Fought and he boxed, yet he still lost. So Irish Mickey Ward landing 20 of his 34 power shots down the stretch, closed it out with a TKO victory over Shea Neary, the first two knockdowns of Neary's career. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the official time, a round of applause for two Irish warriors who put on one hell of a show here in London. The official time, two minutes, 55 seconds of round number eight. Referee Mickey Van calls a halt to the bout, the winner by TKO victory and new WBU light welterweight champion of the world, Irish Mickey Ward. Final punch that numbers will tell the story of an all-out war. In a little under eight rounds, they landed more than 400 punches. They threw nearly 1,100, both fighters landing at an extraordinarily high connect percentage. And in power punches, the story of the fight, they committed to the body. They both landed upstairs. Mickey Ward with a bit of an edge, landing 41 more power shots than Neary. And in the end, the left hook to the body and the uppercut made the difference. Let's go to Larry Merchant at ringside with Mickey Ward. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Mickey. Why did you win this war of attrition? I won it. I mean, I trained hard for it. It was long due since I started. It was in 1985 on ESPN shows, you know, and, uh, you know, Bernie passed away. He's passed away. He gave me the shot. He started me off on the, on the top rank, and I just kept going. But it was all that combined, all the all the stuff I went through, the losses, it, that's what it was, it was just hot. Are you saying that your experience and having fought a better class of fighter was what told in the end? Right, I think so. Um, I fought the best in the world, and you fight a, a Zab Judah. Ain't no one better than that. I don't care what anybody says, ain't no one better than that man. And uh, fighters like that, Vince Phillips, uh, the Charles Murrays, all the guys that I fought, um, and Frankie Warren's, all of them. That all just came out now, you know? Were you convinced by your brother who trained you that you had to press the attack and stop him to get a decision in his home country? Right, I, most definitely. Uh, you seen the first round, usually I was feeling him out, I'll move around a lot, but uh, this fight here, I caught him in the body the first shot, I mean, the first uh, round. And I paralyzed him. I could feel him. Oh, oh, and I knew it. I said, I got to stay here. I know I'm going to take some, but hey, that's the game. You're going to take some. But, you know, I've taken a lot of punches from a lot of guys. And I knew I could do it. Just keep my hands high, you know. I got chaos one round. He caught me with a good shot. But I, but I knew where I was, and I, and I knew keep my hands up and just move back a step. That's all. You hit him with four or five clean, hard right hands in the previous round to the knockout. You think that that softened him up and, and uh, enabled you to hit him with the lefts that stopped right. him? Yes, I I hit him with a lot of flush right hands, doing a double jab, part of the jab, and then bang over the right. I have to thank Dr. Margos at Leahy Clinic for uh, getting my hand back, you know. 15 years of pro. Uh -huh. What does this feel like? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is what it's about. Uh, took longer than I wanted to, but uh, I got it. I mean, I just hope, you know, it puts me into better things. That's all, you know. He's a great fighter. I don't say I'm a better fighter. I'm not better than anybody. I just come here, do my job, do the best I can do. I was a better man tonight. Take nothing away from him, and that was that. Uh, Thank you, Mickey. Thank, Thank you. you for a great fight. Can I say hi to my daughter, Casey, at home? I love you. And hi to my mother. I couldn't be here. I love you, Ma. Jim, 
All right, thank you very much, Larry. Thanks, Mickey Ward. An interesting look at the judges' scorecard, scoring on an unusual 20-point must system. The English judge, Mr. Thompson, gave each of the first six rounds to Shea Neary, and Neary was ahead by eight points on his card. The German judge had Neary ahead by a point, so Neary was headed toward a possible decision victory. Steve Weitzfeld had Ward ahead at the time at which Ward knocked Neary out. What an unbelievable brawl between Shea Neary and Mickey Ward in our preliminary bout tonight. Tough act to follow. Prince Nassim Hamed and Buyani Bungu as those two fighters get ready to come out of the dressing room and enter the ring. How could it possibly be more entertaining than this eighth round TKO victory for Mickey Ward? So it's one down, one to go on this special London calling edition of World Championship Boxing. And now